Hi, Stuart. What do you want? Understanding, sensitivity, most of all your acceptance. What were you, raised by a pack of therapists? <laughs> Jeez, well, where do people learn how to talk like this, Christine? Uh, hello, Stuart. Hello, Miss Armstrong. May I come in? Oh, uh, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Where's Kelly? She's in the car. Actually, she didn't even want to come up here, but I insisted. Not that I was trying to exert some sort of male dominance. How could you? <laughs> I just didn't think we should let the evening pass without dealing with the situation. Should I? No, don't make anything, no. <laughs> Coach Fox, the thing Don't is... sit, please. <laughs> the thing is, I think I know what your problem is. You see me as the outsider. What I don't think you realize is how much a part of Kelly's life I am now. And hey, that makes me part of your life, too. <laughs> We're practically, practically two boughs of the same tree. Now, that doesn't mean you have to love me. <laughs> Although you might grow to. <laughs> All it means is, I think you'd really like yourself a lot more if you could just learn to accept me. It just... It just seems that every time we're in the same room together, we end up embroiled in conflict. And emotionally... Emotionally, I find that extremely taxing. Oh, Stuart, don't start crying. It's all right to cry. Yeah, I mean, if you get caught in a bear trap. I mean, Christy, don't give him any sympathy. He does this all the time. Stuart, what did you do to him? I don't know. I taxed his emotions and broiled him in some. I don't know. I'm just lost. I'm fine, Kelly. I'm fine. Oh, Dad, I am so mad at you. I was going to go home and never speak to you again, and I mean that. But Stuart convinced me to come and talk to you because he faces things head on with strength and conviction and courage. <laughs> but this isn't Stuart's fight. This is between you and me. So we might as well just have this out right now. Fine. Fine. Apologize. What? Why should I apologize? All I was trying to do was just have the same birthday dinner we've been having for the past 19 years. But without any regard for what I wanted or what Stuart wanted. But why should I care what Stuart wants? <laughs> I just explained it to you. Gee. Hey, look, Stuart, if it wasn't for her mom and me, you would have been having dinner alone tonight. Jeez, oh. who the hell could that be? Hello. Uh, uh, hi, Beth. Uh, it's your mom. Huh? Beth, why are you crying? Hang on, hang on, just... She says, uh, you know, it's her first birthday away from home and she misses you. Here, here, talk. Hi, Mom. Thanks. Yeah, I miss you, too. Nothing's wrong. It's just the worst birthday of my whole life. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, Hayden, you don't have anybody but yourself to blame for all of this. If you'd been a little more sensitive to Kelly's feelings, oh, you Christine, would... Christine, don't start giving me a lecture on being sensitive. I don't want to hear it. I, I just meant if you'd been a little less possessive and let Stuart come to dinner... Well, I didn't want him there. I mean, if I don't want to clutter up dinner, I would have invited you. Oh, God. <laughs> Christine, come on. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Fox. Okay. I don't know why we can't just be one big family. I don't want to be a family with a bunch of weepers. Not enough Kleenex in the whole wide world. Where are you going? I'm going to go be a family all by myself. Oh. <laughs>